welcome all to the next lecture on module theory today we will discuss categories so first we will see the definition of categories and then we will see many basic examples of categories and at the end we will see that how this notion it generalizes many basic notions that you are already familiar with we start with the definition here so by a category we roughly mean a class of objects and morphisms between those objects which satisfy some properties more precisely a category it is nothing but a triple like this where this first one it is just uh, a collection and elements there we call objects of that category and second one it is just it is again it is a collection and this collection it is indexed by the uh, set of ordered pair of the objects so for uh, uh, x and y objects in that category for this ordered pair you have this set okay and we call them morphisms from x to y and collection of all these thing we denote this morphism of she morphism of that category such that uh, uh, we have this composition okay so what i mean here that you if you consider a morphism a from x to y and another morphism g from y to z then you can compose them okay so codomain of a that is same as uh, domain of g in that case you can compose these two morphisms and what you get that again that is a morphism okay so that should be a member uh, here okay and if you consider three morphisms suitable morphisms so that you can compose them uh, like uh, codomain of a if that is same as domain of g and codomain of g that is same as domain of h then you can compose them so this second property it is saying that this composition law it is associated so first you compose g and a then you compose it with h that is same as first you compose h and g then you compose it with f okay so this composition law it is associative and so this morphism when your domain and codomain both are same this uh, collection of morphisms it should contain the identity morphism and by identity morphism what i mean so it is a member here such that you compose it with any morphism f whose codomain is same as x then you will get back f and you compose this thing with any other morphism whose domain is same as x then you will get back g so it behaves like identity uh, map okay so when domain and codomain both are same your this collection it should contain this identity morphism okay so a category it is nothing but this triple collection of objects and collection of morphisms and you have this composition law which satisfy this thing these three properties mainly that composition law that should be associative and your collection of morphisms where both domain and codomain are same that should contain identity morphism here are some examples so you consider uh, uh, category of sets so we denote in this way set and whose objects are that means it is collection of objects and morphism between those objects Uh, which satisfies some properties so here objects are all sets and for any two set x and y uh, this ordered pair x comma y you can have this collect this thing so collection of all set maps from x to y and then we can one can verify all those properties so for example if a is a uh, set map from x to y and g is another set map from y to z then you can compose them and then again you will get set map okay so composition law is there and that composition function composition is associative and if x is same as y then you can have identity map and you can verify all those things so this is category of sets and second example you can consider category of topological spaces where objects are all topological spaces and morphisms for any two topological spaces x and y you can consider you can define morphism of x can uh, x uh, comma y uh, you you can take collection of all continuous maps from x to y okay then you can verify all those properties so again uh, it is just function composition and it is associative and identity map is there it is continuous map okay 
so this is category of all topological spaces and you can see that this uh, category it is a subcategory of uh, this one because all topological spaces it is in particular these are sets so this collection of these objects it is subset of uh, this thing and collection of all continuous maps in particular these are set maps so you have containment relation also uh, so uh, keeping this uh, set of objects as same uh, topological spaces uh, so you just you can uh, you can consider a sub collection of this and again you can have another category so it is category c3 whose objects are all topological spaces and morphisms these are just all homeomorphisms from x to y okay note that uh, for two topological spaces x and y you uh, may not have a homeomorphism from x to y they may not be homeomorphic right so in that case this set is empty but if x is same as y uh, it it contains identity map and that is a homeomorphism okay and composition of two homeomorphisms again it is homeomorphism so it satisfies all those properties in the definition okay so we can see that this is also it gives uh, uh, a category okay and here are uh, so this example it is uh, interesting uh, uh, so here we can see that morphism it may not be look like function okay it is just collection okay so you consider a partially ordered set uh, that means p with this partial order uh, and partially ordered set means uh, yeah so this partial order means it is reflexive anti symmetric and transitive okay then you can have a category like this whose objects are elements of p and for any two elements x and y uh, for any two objects x and y you can define your uh, collection of morphisms it is just this arrow uh, pointing uh, x to y if x is less than or equal to y okay so if x is less than or equal to y then uh, this set it contains uh, one element just this arrow pointing x to y otherwise this is empty set okay then you can verify that it satisfies all those properties in the category for example uh, uh, the, since it is partial order so it is reflexive so x is less than or equal to x so you can have identity uh, map uh, pointing x to x okay and it is transitive so x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to z that implies that x is less than or equal to z so that means if you have a map from x to y and from y to z you can compose them to get a map from x to z okay that is transitivity okay and this transitivity it gives that uh, you have composition of functions or compositions of morphisms okay so then this is this is a category uh, induced by this partially ordered set and here are some more examples uh, for example you can consider category of groups where objects are all groups and morphisms are all group homomorphisms okay then you can uh, verify that it satisfies all those conditions okay uh, and composition of two group homomorphisms again it is group homomorphism okay so you have that composition and it satisfies so it is associative and you have identity uh, morphism uh, and, all. and you can consider category of all abelian groups so it is just uh, sub collection of this thing okay and then uh, morphism set is same so you consider two abelian groups and then morphism set is collection of all group homomorphisms so you can see that you are just reducing uh, this collection uh, to collection of all abelian groups uh, yeah so then basically this is a subcategory c5 is a subcategory of c4 and you have something uh, more so you can uh, have a category of all rings uh, so where objects are all rings and morphisms are all ring homomorphisms okay and category of all r modules where uh, objects are all r modules and morphisms are all r module homomorphisms so we define uh, this set uh, morphism of x comma y it is just collection of all r module homomorphisms and then you can uh, verify that you have identity morphism from x to itself for each object x and uh, composition is there composition of two r module homomorphisms again it is r module homomorphism and it is associative so on so this gives a category of uh, all r modules 
and in similar way you can consider categories uh, category of all r algebras so here objects are all r algebras and morphisms are all r algebra homomorphisms so you can see that uh, c6 it is subcategory of c5 and c5 is already subcategory of c4 why uh, this is subcategory of c5 so all rings basically uh, it is a set with two operations addition and multiplication which satisfy some properties so in particular all rings are additive abelian group okay so this is a sub collection uh, of uh, this thing okay and all ring homomorphisms in particular it is uh, additive uh, group homomorphism okay so this also sub collection of this thing so you can see that c6 is sub category of c5 and in similar way uh, you can see that uh, all r modules in particular uh, these are uh, abelian groups okay additive abelian groups so uh, this category of all r modules it is sub category of categories a uh, category of all abelian groups uh, and you can see that c8 so what is r algebra it is basically a combination of ring and modules so first of all an r algebra it is nothing but an r module and also you have ring structure there such that both the structures are compatible in some sense okay so in particular an r algebra it is r module and also uh, it is a ring so you can see that c8 it is sub category of both this category of r modules and category of uh, rings okay and next uh, we define what is isomorphism in a category Okay. So isomorphism in a category. So you consider a category C, and then an isomorphism in C. It is nothing but a morphism such that you have inverse morphism. And what I mean by that? So you uh, so if there exists a morphism, so whose direction is from y to x, such that their composition is uh, this identity on y, and composition of G and F it is identity on x. then we call this morphism as inverse morphism and an isomorphism it is nothing but a morphism uh, such that there exist an inverse morphism like this okay so if you recall the definition of isomorphisms of groups rings and modules so uh, as i said uh, while defining uh, isomorphism of modules that uh, we have given categorical definition and what i mean by that so what is module isomorphism so if there exist a inverse module uh, homomorphism such that uh, inverse homomorphism means their compositions are identity then we call that uh, module homomorphism as isomorphism okay so this is the categorical definition and if you uh, uh, consider category of modules then isomorphism in the category of modules it is just module isomorphism and isomorphism in the category of uh, groups it is group isomorphism okay so in that way you can generalize uh, uh, all the basic notions uh, here so isomorphisms of groups rings and modules yeah i'll stop here